Okay, well, let me, uh, let me get my workshop up here and one moment, please, while I enlarge this no and we'll get the slideshow started. Okay. So again, my name is Jeff Patton. I am in the University Career Center, which is located physically in the Student Union. So if you're coming from the Humanities Building across the causeway into the second floor of the Student Union, we're on the right immediately before you enter the Student Union. If you're downstairs to the bookstore and you're coming upstairs, we're on your left. And we are open both for in-person appointments and uh, video chats virtually. So we're here to help serve your needs. I am uh, the career consultant for the College of Engineering. So those are my specialized students that I work with, but I am also the liaison to the Graduate College. Um, I have multiple degrees, so I'm capable of assisting you with a lot of different things. Again, depending on your focus and where you wanna go, I am not subject matter expert for all of the degrees in the graduate programs, but I have a pretty good idea of what employers are looking for. And that goes across the board, whether you're looking at academic jobs or you're looking at jobs in business and industry. So this workshop is geared towards helping you with your interviewing skills so that you're able to perform your best when you get to an interview. Okay, this is what we're gonna cover today. So the objectives for this presentation are to prepare you for the interview, to talk about different types of interviews so you're familiar and again, able to perform your best, general guidelines. And what I tell students is general guidelines are everything else being equal, this is what you need to know. Specific types of questions that get asked in an interview. Questions you may wish to ask. So being able to ask intelligent questions of the interviewer about things that you want to know or need to know. Talk a little bit about salary and how that should come up in the process. And again, not specifically in the interview, but how we deal with that. Um, what to do after the interview and specific resources that we have available for you as a graduate student to take advantage of. Okay, this sounds really silly, but there are essentially three stages to an interview. Before the interview, because there are things that you need to do prior to the interview occurring. During the interview, and again, a little preparation beforehand is gonna allow you to perform your best during the interview. And there are things that need to happen that you need to do after the interview. So this is follow up, follow through. Now, before the interview, you wanna prepare for that specific interview. And by this, I mean, you need first to know yourself. Why are you taking this interview? What are you expecting from this? Is this, again, a particular employer you're interested in? If so, why? What is it about that employer that's attractive to you? What is it about that specific position that is attractive to you? You need to know what your expectations are going into the interview. You also need to practice talking about your history your, again, being able to talk about your content knowledge, so what you've learned from your education, research you've done, et cetera, as well as your skill sets, software tools, equipment, processes, languages that you know how to use. You want to provide concrete examples of what you've done and how you've done it. Employers are going to look at your resume and say, oh, you're telling me these things about what you know and about your experience and skills you've got. They may want you to elaborate on some of those things. So you need to be prepared to, again, go into greater detail about what you've told them via your resume. You want to research your field. So 
again, within this particular industry, how does your field interact with this? What is the, again, is your field the industry or is your field just one part of the industry? How does it mesh with this particular organization and or job opportunity? So research the organization. What do they do? What are they known for? What's their reputation? Who's their competition? Okay. The more you know about this specific job opportunity and the organization, the more intelligent questions you can ask at the end of the interview. So the more intelligently you can engage the interviewer. Now, the interviewer may not know the answer to some of the questions you ask because not all recruiters are subject matter experts. They work for the organization, they know what the organization does, but you may have very specific questions they can't answer. But they should be able to say, you know, I don't have an answer for that, but I can put you in touch with someone who can answer that question, or I can make contact with this department, division, specific individual within our organization and get back to you about that. So research the field, research the organization, read and review the job description. This is one of the most crucial things because you need to demonstrate in the interview, I understand what you're asking for in this position description. It's saying, I need to have this knowledge, these skill sets, this type of experience, and here's how I have that. This is about why you're a good fit for this opportunity. You want to dress professionally. Now, professionally means different things in different fields. Okay. So if you're interviewing for an academic job, you would probably go in a business suit, again, because you're interviewing for a very professional position in an academic setting. Now, not all of your interview interviewers may be dressed that way, but typically that's what you're gonna do. Um, if you're applying for a job in business or industry, so with my engineering students, it may be less formal, especially if you're doing a video interview. And the idea here is you still want to dress up. And the, uh, I, I tell students in engineering, you know, a polo shirt and khakis is probably appropriate for a lot of interviews. But if I'm going to actually physically attend this interview with, again, someone who's interviewing for the organization, you always want to dress one level above the type of job you want. So it's not a bad idea, again, to dress in that business suit. You're probably not going to do that, again, for a video interview. The way I'm dressed with a, a shirt and tie is perfectly appropriate, but you're not going to go in a t-shirt. And the idea here is you want to demonstrate that you're serious about this opportunity, so you want to dress appropriately. Again, preparation in advance of the interview, knowing yourself, talking about your skills, researching the field, organization. Again, know what it is you're getting into. In terms of, again, professional dress, think about how you wish to be perceived and demonstrate that I'm very serious about this opportunity know what is expected in your field. It's always better to be overdressed than underdressed. Okay, my rule of thumb is this. If you come home from an interview that you physically attended, you were there in person, and you don't feel the need to change your clothes, you were probably underdressed. Just, just say it. Okay, moving along. Types of interviews. So whether this is, again, virtual, or in person, you may have a panel interview where there are several different people who are interviewing you to find out what you know and again, how you're a good fit for the opportunity. 
that could be either for the position or as a screening interview, okay? Typically, phone interviews and video interviews are screening interviews. In other words, we're just trying to make sure that, yeah, you got everything we're looking for. We're going to move you on to the next process where it may be an actual physical interview where you're visiting the campus of this organization and meeting with multiple people. But panel interviews, different, quest, different people asking you questions. It's not a bad idea in any interview situation. You wanna have a pad folio, so where you have paper to write on and an instrument to write with so that you can write down questions. If you have a panel, it's a good idea to write the names of each individual down. Um, if you're physically present, if they're really nice, they will have name badges in front of them or name tags so that you know who to address. With panels, you want to answer the question that's asked to the individual who asks it, but you want to make eye contact with each individual in the panel, okay? Phone interviews, okay? Good news, bad news. 90% of communication is nonverbal. With a phone interview, all you have is the content of your message and the inflection of your voice. So it's a good idea to smile because it brightens your voice. Um, again, you may do a video interview on your phone, but that's not how most people do it. Again, it limits capacity when you're dealing with a, a smartphone. You're probably gonna do a video interview on a laptop or a tablet. Um, and the idea here is you want to be aware of your environment. Now, I'm very aware of my environment. Behind me, I have a bookshelf, and these are either textbooks for courses I've taken or reference material. It, it's not just a collection of books. These are things that I use all the time. Um, but it does give me a certain scholarly air. You can choose video backgrounds. Make sure that it's something appropriate. And I caution people about having too many uh, things in there because it may interfere with them perceiving you. In other words, some of those backgrounds can get a little complex uh, depending on colors. Always, 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 when you're doing something virtually, be aware of your environment be aware of your lighting. I've closed my blinds because I get a little bit of glare this time of day. How do I appear? So check your audio, check your video, make sure everything's working for those video interviews. Best if you can be behind a closed door. So no barking dogs, crying babies, etc. No distractions. Speaking of which, and this goes back to the professional dress, I have a personal pet peeve. I own this one. Um, so in an interview, you do not want anything that is going to distract from the content of the message you're delivering. So we caution people, you know, about jewelry, about professional dress, unusual hair color or hairstyle, those can be distracting things. It's not that you don't want to be yourself and demonstrate your style, but you want to make sure in the interview that the interviewer is hearing what you have to say. Personal pet peeve, tongue studs. And why? Because every time a person opens their mouth, there's this little flash of light that is a reflection off that tongue stud. I encourage people, take them out if you have one. Um, the idea, again, is you want to be perceived in the best possible light in terms of why you're qualified for this position. So make sure that you're communicating the message that you want the interviewer to receive. Now, again, phone interviews, video interviews are often just screening interviews. I got hired for this particular position over a Skype interview. So this was pre-Zoom. Um, I had never had that happen before. I had always visited a campus before I had a job offer made or accepted it. Um, but 
screening interviews. It's just about, here's how I'm qualified. They're making sure you, you check off all the boxes. Second interviews are, they're more serious. And during the interview, again, the questions they ask are going to assess the nature of your experience, your education, in other words, specific things you know, your level of preparation, again, specific skill sets you have and how, again, what your level of expertise is with those, your attitude, are, this, are you excited about this job? You want to be somewhat animated in an interview. Let them know that, yeah, this is something that I'm really excited about. I am engaged with this kind of work and this is what gives me a sense of satisfaction. So you want to have a positive attitude. Again, their questions may ask about personal characteristics, things that make you a standout in terms of being a team player, in terms of the research you do, et cetera, but things that make you someone who brings value added to their organization. General guidelines, arrive on time. Okay, if you're doing it virtually, this is easy. Make sure you've checked in in advance, make sure that your camera, and your microphone are working properly, but arrive on time. And on time means early. Do this at least five, but maybe 10 minutes before the interview is gonna start, make sure everything's working right. Um, if you're physically going to a location, you don't wanna arrive too early. So 15 minutes is as early as you wanna arrive, but you wanna make sure that you're there on time. I tell stories on myself all the time. For one position I'd applied for, I had visited this campus before. I knew where I was going. I was very sure that I was all set to be there on time. I didn't know there was a freeway closure. I was a half hour late for that interview. They interviewed me, but I didn't get a job offer. So it's really important to be on time. Don't keep the interviewers waiting. Greet them appropriately. I realize. These days, not everyone is shaking hands, but you want to acknowledge their presence. Again, if you are shaking hands, if we talk about the, the two pump handshake. So you want to have a firm, but not crushing grip. So you don't wanna be a limp fish. You don't wanna crush their hand, but a firm two pump handshake. Be aware of body language. Again, my background is as a counselor, we talk about attending behavior. So make sure you're making eye contact with the people that are greeting you. Call them, again, learn their names, try and do that. If that's a struggle for you, again, write things down. Be positive and enthusiastic. Let them know that, again, you're excited about this opportunity. Make sure that you know what the next steps are in the process. I tell students, if you have no other question at the end of the interview, if they've answered everything that you've asked in the, the interview process, they've told you about all the things they want you to know, you want to ask, what's the next step in the process? Because you want to know, am I the first person they're talking to or the last? How long should I expect to wait to hear something about this interview? So you want to know what the next steps are. Thank the interviewer for their time. Time is precious. We only get so much of it. So make sure you're being courteous and respecting their time. Again, questions you want to know about this opportunity. So details about the position, about the program, what the reporting structure is. So is this a hierarchical opportunity or is this something where it's a pretty flat uh, organizational structure, and you can go and talk to anybody. Um, management, organizational style, how, how would they describe themselves? Again, culture of the organization. Organizations have cultures. They have ways of doing things. And you want to know, is this something I'm comfortable with? So learning about the culture of the organization is going to help convince you, you know, this is definitely the place I want to work or I like what they do, but I'm not sure I'm a good fit for this organization. If there are specific issues in your field, things that are, again, newsworthy, they are current things going on, are there things you need to know about how this organization 
is engaging those. Go beyond the obvious. What are things that are important to you that are, again, issues in your field that you need to know about? In the interview, there are essentially three types of questions that get asked. The first are general open-ended questions. So tell me about yourself. Everybody hates this, but here's the scoop. I tell students, you always want to frame your response to this in terms of the work you want to do. I've known I wanted to do this since I took this course. I had a life-changing experience and realized this is what I want to do. I've always known this is what I want to do. This type of question is designed to elicit information from you about why you want to do this kind of work, what you're excited about. So it doesn't matter what your answer is. It matters that you know what your answer is and you're able to articulate this. But you always want to frame your answer to the tell me about yourself in terms of the job. They don't want to know all about your personal life. They want to know, about, again, how are you prepared to fill this position? What is it that excites you about the work you'd be doing here? So you want to give them something, again, framed in terms of the job opportunity. The second type of questions that you get maybe behavioral or situational. So this is a, tell me about a time when, give me an example of specific things you've been engaged with. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute in terms of how you go about answering that. We've got, again, a format for you that's gonna make that easy. The third type of question are content or skill specific. So they wanna know about how you've used AutoCAD or some other software program, or how you've engaged with using particular equipment or processes to get a task done. The reality is, you know your stuff or you don't. It tells students there's only one thing worse than not getting a job that you really want, and that's getting a job and finding out you don't want it. They expect you to know things you don't know, or be able to do things you can't do, or it's just not a good fit. It's a toxic environment. There's some, so you wanna go into an interview. This is what I bring to the table. Give them the best you've got, but you wanna relax about the process and realize if you're a good fit, you're probably gonna move forward in the process. If you're not, you really don't wanna be there anyway. Okay, so, when we're talking about situational or behavioral questions, we talk about using the STAR approach. It's nothing exotic. It's just, again, a framework for you to accurately and concisely answer the questions. So situation, task, action, result. Tell me about a time when you were a member of a team and a team member wasn't performing up to expectations. What was the situation? How did you deal with it? Well, okay, so I'm a member of a team working on a particular project. This is the situation. I was tasked with doing whatever for this project. This other person was tasked with something else. We realized they lack the skill sets or whatever. And so we reassigned tasks. That's the action you took. And then as a result of that, we were able to successfully get this project done. You want to use specific examples. So this isn't a, I would do this or I would do whatever. It's this is what actually happened. And if it worked well, that's great. If it didn't work well, what did you learn from that situation? Okay, employers sometimes will ask about failures and what did you do wrong? What you want to do is be honest about, okay, in this situation, this is what happened and it was a disaster. We, again, did our best to correct that. And here's what I learned from that. In other words, I will never do that again because I learned these are the things you need to do in order to do this successfully, okay? All right, moving along. During the interview, okay, 
realistically, you do not raise the question of salary. You wait for the employer to bring it up. Now, there are lots of employers, they will say, okay, what, what are your salary expectations? They don't always volunteer information. Some will, but this is why it's important for you to know what's typical for someone in my field. Now, there are lots of resources you can use to find this on our website. We have marketable skills. It's on the second page of our resources for every undergraduate program. This is geared towards undergraduates, so take this with a grain of salt. But we have, okay, what is typical entry-level salary, fifth-year salary, 10th-year salary for someone with a degree in this field? But there are other resources out there, glassdoor.com. You can go to the Federal Bureau of Labor, so ONET online, and they can tell you for specific positions, what's typical salary for someone in this kind of position. So first you wait for the employer to bring it up, but then you need to know what is reasonable for this type of work in this type of environment. Oftentimes students ask about negotiation. And what I want you to understand is that negotiation is a type of conflict resolution. There are different types of conflict resolution. Negotiation is one type. If there's no conflict, in other words, they're offering a salary that is typical for this field in this environment, in this location, there's nothing to negotiate. Okay. Now, again, in some fields, there's an expectation of this. So you need to know your worth in terms of, okay, this is what is typical. This is what other employers are offering, et cetera. So you have knowledge about when to negotiate. Yes, somebody else is offering a better, again, package as far as benefits, whether that's vacation or insurance or whatever, you want to make sure for any job offer that you're comparing apples with apples, that it's a similar position you're looking at. But if it's typical, if it's essentially the same, there really isn't anything to negotiate. So know your worth, know what the whole package is. And again, benefits are significant. I've never, again, made a lot of money but I've always had good health care. And I can tell you, it's been about six years ago now, I had to have an emergency appendectomy. And as a result of the process, because I went path of least resistance, in other words, I went to campus health first, and then they sent me to um, the emergency room. And I went through, again, I went through triage and all of this if I had had no health insurance, that would have cost me $33,000. Because I followed the path of, of least resistance, it reduced the charges that initially happened, dropped about 11,000 off, so 22,000. When all was said and done with my insurance, I think I paid $132 out of pocket, okay? Benefits are significant, especially as you age. So know the whole package, know what they're offering and how that meets your needs. Second interview, so you go through this initial process and they invite you to their location. It may be an all day or several day process. So you may meet with many people. You may be asked to make a presentation on your research, or provide a lecture or some other type of performance, again, for them to evaluate, how do you do this? Again, in terms of what you know, how you're able to do the job. You may have meals with people. And so it's a good idea to have some idea of what's good etiquette in a dining situation so that you're able to perform well. Rule of thumb is, Okay, first, small bites because they're asking questions of you during the meal. You don't wanna have a large mouthful of something. <laughs> um, also, make sure that you're engaging whoever's there at the meal, not just the person who asked the question. Um, you may get a tour of the organization, so their campus and or the city, they may take you to specific events. 
always for those second interviews, when you're being physically invited to their location, ask in advance what their expectations are. If they are going to ask you to present on your research, if they have a format, if they have a schedule, you want to know what that is before you get there. Also, if you have to travel, okay, let's say it's out of state and you have to fly. Is this on your dime? Are you paying for that? Or are they going to arrange for this or give you, again, funds to cover your travel expenses? There are lots of different setups. I had one interview with a, a college where <laughs> if they invited you and they didn't offer you the job, they covered your travel expenses. If you went for the interview and they offered you the job and you accepted, they covered your travel expenses. If they offered you the job and you didn't accept, they split the travel expenses. So you paid half and they paid half. So it's really important, again, make sure you know if you're going for a physical interview at their campus that what the expectations are. Okay, after the interview. So we've gone through this, everything's smooth. What do you need to do? First, send a thank you note. And I am old school and other people have backed me up. I believe that means you get a packet of thank you notes, a box of them, and fill this out. I don't care if it's, again, handwritten or if you print it off on a, a printer, but the idea is something that you send physically through the mail, put a stamp on, makes you stand apart from other applicants. On at least one occasion, I'm convinced the thank you note I sent was what got me the job. So it's a good idea to follow up. Now, email thank yous are appropriate. There's nothing wrong with that. But something sent through the mail, again, it's that feather in your cap. It's that thing that makes you stand apart from other applicants. Evaluate your performance. Okay, what worked well? What went well in the process? What were you unhappy with? And how can you improve that? Again, for other interviews. Um, keep records. I don't care if you do this paper and ink or you set up a spreadsheet in Excel, but no, who you interviewed with, when you interviewed with them, when you should expect something back, because you want to know how long, again, I should be expecting to wait to hear something from this particular employer. Accepting offer. Okay, this is an ethics issue. This is ethical, and I want to emphasize this to you because it's important. If an employer has extended a job offer to you, and you've evaluated that and you've decided, yes, I'm going to accept that offer, you stop interviewing. Do not accept a position and continue to interview, okay? Reneging on a job offer. In other words, I've accepted it and I was like, just kidding, I'm not gonna take that. It is unethical, it is unprofessional, it reflects badly on you and your reputation as well as the reputation of the institution, okay? This is a big deal. Do not accept an offer unless you intend to follow through on that. And I've been in a position where I had a job offer and I wasn't sure about it and I, I, I had to turn it down. I waited another six months before I got a job offer. There is, again, a value to time, but you want, again, to protect your reputation and the reputation of UTSA. So please do not accept the job offer you don't intend to take. It's unethical behavior. Okay, moving along. We have lots of resources to help you in this process. So we will do mock interviews. I had one this morning where I sat down with a student. I ran through questions to give them a chance to practice and gave them feedback. We also have resources on our website where you can, again, go through the process. There are also online videos that you can observe and see, again, what people did that was good, what they did that wasn't good. So I encourage you to take advantage of those. I'm gonna shout, say, first off, if you go to, it's careercenter.utsa.edu is our website. But 
when you go to it, this is what it looks like. If you click into resources and it's right there on the first page, interview stream. This is again, an opportunity for you to practice interviewing. It's not again, gonna cover every instance, but I know they've updated things and I want you to see what's there. So basically you wanna go in through our website because we've already paid for your access to this. Again, you can select from a pre-built interview. In other words, they have ones that are there. You can do random questions. You can select specific questions from their menu that you wanna practice interviewing. In other words, you can't just do things at random, but they have questions that are in there that you can select for you to practice. You can record it and review it. You can send the interview to someone else to review, to give you feedback. A login is required. So again, you wanna use your ABC123, go through our, our webpage to do this. So your email address, set up a password, then you can log in. It's essentially gonna look like this. So it has prepare, so things again to help you in advance. Conduct where you're gonna again, go through the interview process. By the way, there's a little avatar that pops up that asks you the question. You've got, I think, two and a half minutes to provide a response. And then you go on to the next question. Again, you can go back and review it. You can redo the question, but this is a way for you to practice interview. Interviewing, it's like any other skill. The more you practice it, the easier it gets. And again, you can review this. So if you wanna do this on a smartphone or a tablet, you can download the app to do this, okay? Again, I prefer a larger screen. So a laptop is fine, a desktop is fine. Tablet, maybe. On my phone, I wouldn't wanna do it because again, looking at tiny little screen, kind of hard. Um, so it will tell you, let us know how you'd like to interview, practice interviews. We have some courses here at the university that require students to participate in an interview. So those are assignments. And then there are, again, customized interviews where you can go in and practice specific questions. This is an example, again, of different fields. So professional interviewing, um, we've got health professions, we've got other uh, classes here. So COU 2033, they have specific questions they have to practice interviewing. Um, there's things for general business. So I would encourage you, you may look at those, but you can go in and again, create an interview. You can see we have different fields that are listed and they will have specific questions within the field that you can select. I would encourage you to look at other fields than your own to see if maybe there are other questions that you wanna practice. So again, just a tool to help you improve. I want you to know that another resource is VMOC. VMOC is not only an AI to assist you with your resume or CV, it will also help you with your elevator pitch and or interviewing. Now, before I get into some of that, let's talk about the interview process. I always get questions about being confident or being nervous in an interview. First, you wanna go into the interview as relaxed, comfortable, and confident in what you bring to the table as you can. Again, content knowledge, what you know, skill sets you have, the nature of your experience. That's all that you have any control over, okay? Other than, again, your physical demeanor, being professionally dressed, again, how you present via the camera if you're doing it online or in person. But the idea here is be confident in what you know. You've worked hard at your degree. You are doing the things you need to do to be prepared for work in your field. So be confident in that. Know what you know, know what you don't know. Be aware of specific limitations you may have. But I tell students, as my father used to tell me, get in there and pretend like you knew what you were doing. Now, this is not faking it till you make it. This is being confident in the content knowledge, skill sets, and experience you have. Be yourself. Do not put on airs. Do not try and, again, 
project an image that's not accurately an image of you. If you've prepared in advance, you're going to perform your best. With respect to being relaxed in the interview, what are things that help you to relax, that help you to perform your best? So if that's, you know, I need to sit down and have a cup of tea, or I need to go out for a jog or a run beforehand, again, showering and dressing for the interview afterwards. But the idea is things that help you to be calm and focused. One thing that you can do in any situation is to take 10 deep breaths. And by that, I mean, that's one. What this does is it helps to get oxygen into your system, which helps your brain to function more effectively. And it provokes a relaxation response. So again, you know how you best respond, but make sure you're relaxed going into the interview because then you're gonna perform your best. At the very least, engage those 10 deep breaths and that will allow you to perform. Remember that an interview is a conversation between two or more parties where each party is trying to find out information that's important to them. So the interview is trying to find out how you're qualified and a good fit for this position and or the organization. You're trying to find out, is this the right position for me? Am I gonna be comfortable there? Am I gonna be able to be effective in what I'm doing? So it's a conversation. It is not, again, someone with bright lights in your face trying to beat a confession out of you. This is an opportunity to share and to get them to share information that you want to know. Okay, your elevator pitch. This is, again, sometimes known as your 60 second commercial. So you're at a conference or you're in some other setting where you want to introduce yourself to some participant. The idea here is you wanna go up, shake their hand, tell them a little bit about yourself. Hi, my name is Jeff Patton and I work in career services at the University of Texas at San Antonio. And a little bit about your interest in them and their organization and then allow them the opportunity to tell you a little bit about themselves, what they do, what their organization's about. The idea here is this is the graceful introduction, ask a question or two, and a graceful withdrawal. In other words, you don't want to monopolize their time, but this is a way to begin networking. Networking is still the number one way people find jobs. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor, it's close to 80%. So, you want to be able to give an introduction. For those of you who may be more introverted or shy, it's still an important skill you need to do because at some point you're going to have to introduce yourself to people around you, whether it's your peers or other clients, etc. So learning to give a good elevator pitch is important. VMOC, again, as I mentioned, is a tool that you can use for this. They have, again, you want to go in through our site to do this because we've already paid for your access to this. So go in and complete your profile and set this up. Then they've got, again, tools to help you with your resume, career fit. Um, Aspire, I believe, is uh, about interviewing, but their elevator pitch, they've got this in there as well. So this is a resource you can use to see how you come across in the virtual setting. So if you're doing something via video, um, but it can assist you with your interviewing skills. So I encourage you, take advantage of this resource. So they've got Calibrate. So this is initially setting up practice, and then it will provide feedback for you. Again, the nonverbals, eye contact that you're making, facial expressions, Content strength, in other words, words you're using, are they convincing words? Are they demonstrating knowledge of vocabulary used in your field? Um, delivery of speech, again, voice inflection, so vocal features and appropriate pauses. Speaking of appropriate pauses, this is another thing about nervousness or confidence in an interview. 
do is an unnatural situation. As a result of this, because we're being forced to talk about ourselves, which we may not be comfortable with, and or tell specific information, because it's an unnatural situation, our native natural response to this is to try and hurry and get through it because it makes us uncomfortable. Fight that inclination, slow down. This is especially true if you are having an interview conducted in English and English is not your native language. Oftentimes, non-native speakers get in a hurry and they can be difficult to understand. Slow down, enunciate your words, articulate your thoughts, give complete and accurate answers to the questions. And if you're uncertain that that has happened, ask, did I answer your question at the end of this? You don't wanna do that all the time, but for specific questions where, again, there's more than one way to interpret this or something may not have come across, that's an opportunity for the interview to clarify what they're looking for. It's also appropriate for you to, when a question is asked, if you don't understand, ask for clarification. What is it they're looking for? What is, again, in that question, what is it they want to know? Are you asking about X? Are you asking about Y? So that you're clear about how to frame your answer for that question. Networking, why bother? Again, this helps you to learn interviewing skills. It can gain support for job career related experience search. It gives you potential leads on positions. So find out what's out there. It is a way to gather information that may not be published or out there to the general public um, and to develop relationships with people that you may work with in the future. So that networking feature, if you're using LinkedIn, if you're using Roadrunner Network, this is a way, again, to start that networking and making connections for opening up other opportunities. Okay, any questions for me about the interviewing presentation I've given today? 